Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Taj. I'm not a cook, I'm not a chef. I don't have any formal training, but I like to cook and I like to learn things about cooking. So I watch a lot of cooking tutorials and things and I worked at a restaurant, so I got to see back of the house a little bit. But just to be quick, I don't wanna do a long intro. Um, I'm gonna cook today, I'm gonna cook some black sea bass, I think it is, fingerling potatoes and broccoli. So yeah, we're just gonna wing it. Hey guys, so I'm here at my family's garden. Well, yeah, trying to pick some rosemary. As you can see, I don't know how much I'm gonna take, but I'll show you after. And I think I wanna be fancy and do some purple basil as well. We have regular basil, but I don't know which one I'm going to do. So, I'll see you guys in the kitchen. So, <clears throat> I've never smelled fresh basil before, but... Mm, it smells really good. <clears throat> it's like earthy or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, guys. So, I have my ingredients here. Um, I'll start with the spices, I guess. I have this curry and garam masala that I got from a place called Melange. Um, it's a spice shop in Philly. And I got, a lot of this stuff comes from Whole Foods by the way. Um, some turmeric root, caraway seeds, bay leaf, chili powder, coriander seed, mustard seeds, some black pepper and then for the rest I have these little fingerling potatoes I guess they could be called maybe not fingerling because they're not that long but um it's just a simple whatever these little potatoes I have this white truffle oil that I got from the Philly flower show um, mortar and pestle some broccoli from my garden also rosemary purple and regular bay leaves, some dill I think this is, yeah because the leaves are too big for parsley, I think this is dill but don't, don't, don't quote me on that, that's also for my garden, some garlic, lemon, regular onion, lime, and this black bass, yeah black bass, so I got two whole black bass fish, um, if you're like me and the seafood and meat section of the grocery store intimidates you, this was hard for me to do because I've never cooked a whole fish and I just didn't know how to talk. Like when I walked over, I didn't know what to say. So I called um, I called someone to ask that I, I trust his, his food expertise and he told me just to ask for whatever fish that I wanted and Ask for it scaled and gutted. So that's what I did. So once I wash my hands, I'll show you guys it in more detail. But yeah, those are my ingredients. Oh, and limes. I don't know if I'm going to use these, but I have limes too. So those are my ingredients, and I will come back once I wash my hands and tie up my hair. Okay, guys, so I have a little pan here. Well, it's a pot, but I'm just doing a little bit. I have a little pot here on medium heat that I'm going to put some olive oil in. Just enough, not too much. And then I have some garlic that I've peeled and cut in half. You can see I want to focus. So I'm putting that in there. And two bay leaves. So one, two, not a lot. Or maybe it is a lot, I don't know. Like I said, I'm winging this. And some caraway seeds. A nice bunch, you know. And I'm just like frying these up. Like I, I get a lot of this from another YouTube vi channel called My Money, My Food. And it's like an Indian village. So I get a lot of this from that. 
And I see that they fry their herbs before they grind them up and put them, like, like they grind them up into a paste, so that's what I'm trying. So, you don't want to do it for too long because then the garlic is going to fry, but you just want to kind of toast it. And it smells amazing. Okay, so I'm turning that off. Man, this smells so good. So I'll show it to you. That's what it looks like. And I'm just going to drain the liquid and put it in my mortar and pestle. So I'll turn you around so you can see that. To the best that I can, so wish me luck. So this is what I came up with. A little paste not perfect but this is my first time so I don't mind I'm not a perfectionist really so I'm gonna put this in my little bowl to be mixed with my other spices okay and then in this bowl I'm gonna grind up some yellow mustard seeds actually I'll clean it first I can mix in some mustard seeds. Ooh, ooh, little mustard, mustard seeds, and some black pepper. And a little bit more of the caraway seeds because I can't help myself. And we're gonna mix this up. I'm the king, anything I say about. Okay. I think that's good. So this is what it should look like. Bring the light a little closer. This is what it should look like. So we're throwing this in here with our little paste that we made from the garlic, bay leaves, and the caraway seeds. And then <clears throat> in here, I'm also putting my chili powder my coriander my turmeric I'll just open the big part of this because I use a lot of this. This is really good for you. And then my garam masala. Not too much of that. And then a little bit of the curry because I want to taste the other. The other spices. Okay. 
Then I'm gonna get a, a fork to mix it up first. Do a fork first. Now that I'm seeing the using my mortar and pestle again, I think I'm gonna invest in a bigger one for things like this. And then I'm gonna get some water to make this into a paste. I'm gonna try one tablespoon of water first. And use this spoon and mix that up. And we're gonna do one more. So make that two tablespoons of water. I want it to be a paste. This looks good, but I think I'm gonna do like a Let's do a half. Yeah, I'm going to do a half. So now make that two and a half. So it should stick to the spoon and come out in a clump. So this is our paste that we're going to put on our bass. Okay. So I have my fish, my bass here that I've rinsed a lot. You need to make sure you clean it really good. and. Like I said, this was hard for me to do because I've never had to order anything like this before in a supermarket, but you want to make sure you order, you want to ask for your fish to be scaled so the skin is smooth and gutted. So they'll cut it and uh, make sure all the organs and things are out. So just make sure you rinse it really good, like really good. So that's what I did. And I'm just going to get my lemon ready to put in. Inside the inside the cavity. So I'm just gonna cut that. Have yeah, my lemon. Oh, it's a little too thick. Have my lemon, and then a little bit of onion. Take some sprigs of this dill. Cause why not? I'm sure I could use rosemary, but I'm gonna try the dill. Just just cause. Just cause. So 
I'm gonna take my fish and I'm gonna score it, like, uh, not score it, I think that's the crosshatch. I'm just gonna slice lines into it, not too deep. Now I'm gonna do both sides, but you don't have to. I just wanna make sure that my paste gets all in there. And then I'm going to stuff, well I'll use the paste first. Uh, take my paste and rub it, move this knife out of the way, rub it all in. Even in your little um, slices that you made, make sure you get it in there. Go all around it. On the other side, again paying attention to those slices that you made, make sure you get it in there. Open them up if you have to. And of course, the inside, can't forget about the inside. And this smells so good, oh my goodness. I didn't expect it to smell good. You know when you're watching a cooking tutorial and they use spices and things and you just are dying to smell it? Yeah. You could do the, the head if you want, but no one's eating the head, so I'm not going to do the head. Just massage it in there. You want to massage it in there. And I'm sure you could do this with fillets if you don't want the bones and the head and all that. It's too much for you, but I like the aesthetic of it. So yeah, just keep massaging it in there. Don't be afraid to overdo it. If anything, it's just going to have more flavor. Okay, and then take your lemon. You can put it inside the fish, along with your onion, and your dill. And just stuff it in there, it doesn't have to be cute. If it's falling out, it's fine. It should look like that. It might not stay, but that's okay. I'm not really worried about it. Your fish should look like this, so I'm just going to lay this in a pan. And do my other fish.
Okay guys, so I've done my fish. And that's what it looks like. And I'm just gonna take some olive oil. Just regular olive oil, got from Whole Foods. And kinda drizzle it over the top. A little more than a drizzle, definitely, but. And then, I'm also gonna massage that in to my fish. Make sure you get it nice on the bottom. Just if your stuffing falls out, just, just put it back, no big deal. And I'm gonna wash my hands and we're gonna put this in the oven. Oh, you know what? I actually forgot to salt it. So, I'm gonna do that before I put it in the oven because Lord knows I love some salt. So, I just have some regular, I wish I had kosher salt, but I'm just doing some regular table salt and sprinkle it on there. Make sure you get the other side. And even get those little flaps. Don't do too much, but. Okay, and then we're gonna put this in the oven now. Officially, officially put it in the oven. Of course, I have to be millennial and take a picture because why wouldn't I you know I'm gonna make sure I snap a photo okay so I'm gonna put this in the oven and I'll be back when we get to the potatoes okay so whoa, whoa. Okay, so I have my potatoes, my little potatoes. I just took each one and just kind of sliced it a little bit. Not all the way through. If you do do it all the way through, it's fine. It doesn't matter. But I just sliced them um, halfway. And I'm just going to put my white truffle oil in. I'm gonna be generous about it. I mean, after all, these are roasted potatoes. And then I'm going to do pepper. And salt. And I, I could have used a spoon to mix it, but I like mixing it with my hands. It's fun, more fun that way. And just make sure all your potatoes are coated. Okay. And then I'm putting them on an aluminum foil lined pan. And just spread them out and get all the oil you can out of the bowl. So that it looks like that. My hands are really oily, but. And just taste to see if it's enough salt. It's definitely enough salt. So I'm gonna leave that.
And my herbs I'm not going to do until the, the potatoes are pretty much done because I, I want them to keep their green color. So I'm going to pop these in the oven for probably about maybe 20-25 minutes. Same as the fish or until they're tender. It's up to you to decide how you like them. But until they're tender. And if you want to see how our fish is doing, that's our fish in there. Let me just zoom you in so you can see it. Look at that guy, he's looking at you. He's asking to be helped. Too bad. But yes, yeah, going nicely. Look at that spice. I can't wait. It's gonna be so good. So yeah, gonna pop that in and let's chop up our Okay guys, so I've taken my fish out. And look at that. The fish has been in for about 20 minutes. 20, 25 minutes. Obviously cook it to your liking, but once you start seeing this stuff, it's like kinda, I don't know how to describe it, but this stuff, it's pretty much on its way, done. Um, yeah, so the fish looks great. Um, the potatoes are still in because they take a little longer, but they'll be done shortly. And right now I'm just steaming my broccoli that I also picked. And one of those, you know, double steamer things with the holes at the bottom. So yeah, steaming that right now. So I'm going to let that go and it will be complete. So when I plate it up, I will show you guys. So here I have my fresh rosemary that I picked earlier and my basil, both purple and green. And I'm just gonna chop this up. I'm not good at cutting. I wish I was a little better, but you know, it'll come with practice, I'm sure. I'm just gonna roll it up and cut it.
So these are all my little my herbs. All chopped up. Ready for our potatoes. Okay guys, so my broccoli is done steaming. My potatoes are out, done. Just gonna put those herbs that I cut up earlier on top of that. And we can mix those up a little bit. I'm doing this with one hand, so. Okay, and I'm gonna plate this up with this sauce that I made last minute. It's just sour cream, uh, lime, and some parsley that I found in the refrigerator. So, I'm just gonna eat that with the broccoli because I don't really want to salt it or anything. So, I'm just gonna eat it with that. I'm gonna plate this up and I'll be okay, back. Okay, guys, so <clears throat> have my food here. Got my potatoes, got my broccoli, have my dip for my broccoli and probably my potatoes, and my fish head. So I'm really excited how, I'm happy with how it turned out. So let's see if I like it. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna try the potatoes first by themselves. Really good. They're really well done. Um, I'm glad I didn't bake the herbs in with them because the fresh herb taste is really good. I really like it. Not too salty, not too oily at all. I can taste a little bit of the truffle oil that I used. They go really well together. Now for this fish, let's dig into this. Take this bone out. Okay. Mm mm mm. Really good. I can taste all the spices. I will say that um, I left the fish in the oven a little too long. I could have taken it out a little earlier, but even still, it's really good. Also not too, also not too salty. I can taste the lemon. Since I stuffed the lemon in the cavity, I can taste it within the meat. Really good. So I am happy. Now I'm going to try this broccoli with this sour cream spread. Mmm. That's really good. Usually I'm a salt person. I put salt on everything, but I don't need salt for that. That is delicious. Mmm. Really good. So, it was a success. I think besides cooking the fish a little bit too long, still really good. I would give this a 8.5 out of 10. So, um, until the next video, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you next time. Bye.